finding ancestors in the UK census record should be fairly straightforward, you would think. After all, every person in every household, in theory, was supposed to be included. So why is it sometimes so difficult to find a specific person in the records? Now, I'm talking, not talking here about when you have too many results, particularly when your ancestor has a common name and you don't have much other criteria to go by. That's a common problem with uh, common first names and surnames. I'm talking about when you have a fairly distinctive name, you know the place of birth, you know the age, you're even pretty sure about the kind of occupation they had, but for some reason they remain stubbornly elusive. Now I had this problem recently while I was doing some background research on a client's ancestor for a written biography. This person had two very distinctive middle names, which he used on almost every document, including other census records. We also had a definite place of birth and birth year, so it should have been easy. But despite much fiddling around with the name and other search criteria, he just did not turn up either in the 1871 or 1881 census. So let's have a look at why this sometimes happens. Well, the most common reason for not finding someone in the census is due to the name being so badly spelled that it doesn't show up, even if you're not doing an exact search. Now, to understand why this can be such a problem, you need to know exactly how the census information was gathered. First of all, the enumerators visited each household and spoke to the head of the household and asked for details of all the people there on the night of the census. The head of the household did not write this information themselves, as we do today. But many people in the 19th century were illiterate. So the enumerator would write down what he had heard, which is our first, po first point in which spellings, which were not standardised anyway, could end up being very different. And another point here is that if there were boarders in the household who were not in the house at the time, the head might just make a guess at their age or place of birth. So bear in mind that if your ancestor was likely have be, to have been in a boarding house, there is the possibility that the details given were not recorded correctly. So don't dismiss someone like this who seems to have a different birthplace than, than you were expecting, for example. Now the second point where mistakes would be made is when the household books were copied. Now, the images we see today are not the books that were written by the enumerators visiting the households. Those were destroyed after being copied into the records that are now the documents that we now view. Well, this means that the people copying could very often make mistakes and copy a name wrongly, especially if the handwriting was bad. And Thirdly, of course, we now use indexes to find specific people, but that means that modern day transcribers have had to copy the names and details from those uh, already copied images into the indexes, which is another point where errors can occur. Reading 19th century handwriting is not always easy, so many errors have been made at the transcribing stage. So if you can't immediately find your ancestor, then think about how his name or place of birth may have been misheard, misspelled, miscopied or mistranscribed at some stage in the process or even a combination of any of these. And you can see that what's written in the indexes may be very different to the original information. So the first thing you need to do is play around with spellings, wildcard searches, try a wider birthplace range and, and age range. Sometimes try just putting in a first name without the surname or vice versa with all the other criteria put in as, exa in a, 
as exact. This can sometimes reveal a name that has been completely tra mistranscribed. But sometimes this still doesn't work, as what the, was the case with my client's ancestor. So we might have to think of other reasons why he or she is not turning up in the census records. Well, the first thing we might think of is that they were out of the country on the night of the census. Well, this might be the case with wealthy families who maybe had property abroad or military men who might be involved in war or just be stationed elsewhere. However, with more working class families, going abroad temporarily is very unusual and we are more likely to see this happen only if they permanently emigrated. So if they are in a later census in the UK, then this is probably not the case. However, if they had Irish family, it is possible they were visiting family in Ireland and there won't be any available records for this due to the Irish census records being destroyed in the fire in 1922. So if you think your ancestor had Irish family, then this might be the case. But it didn't seem to be the case for the person I was looking for. So what else might have happened? Well, sometimes people might have some reason for not wanting to be found at the time and could have changed their name. This might be because they've been in trouble with the law previously or there could be more personal reasons. If crime is the reason, then you might try looking for court records or newspaper records to see if the person had some previous criminal record. However, if the reasons for changing the name was personal, you know, such as deserting a wife or disagreements with a parent, for example, then it's unlikely you'll find them. If a person didn't want to be found then, it's going to be extra difficult to find them now. However, again, I didn't feel that this was the case with my client's ancestor. He seemed to be quite happily married. And although his wife was staying with, with her family in 1881, while he seemed to be absent, they had further children after this date. And there he was again, with his full name proudly presented on every subsequent document. Sometimes you get a real feel for a person's character by reading between the lines. And I certainly did not feel that he was a particularly elusive character. I have certainly come across missing ancestors who did feel a little bit dodgy. So my final theory is this. If a working class man seemed to have many different jobs and moved from place to place, it was probably very likely that he had to take work where he could find it. And this sometimes meant travelling away from the family. And I can imagine a scenario in this case where he might not have enough money to pay for bed and board for a night or maybe several nights and may have slept rough. Of course, in this case, such a person would not have been recorded and therefore slipped through the net of the census records. My client's ancestor did have varying occupations across the years and they often seemed to be staying with family rather than in their own home. So after all other possibilities, I think this may have been the case in this instance. Of course, one can never know for sure, but sometimes we can only surmise on what has happened based on what we know of the person from other records. I am pleased to say that this person's life did become more settled uh, later on and he seems to have eventually earned enough money for his widow to have left a will when she died much later. So to summarise quickly, 
The most likely reason for not finding someone on the census is usually because of the wrong name, place of birth or age due to copying errors. But sometimes it could be because the person is either just not there, has changed their name or was not in a valid household on the night of the census. Oh, and just a note about women in the 1911 census. One more reason why you might not find a female ancestor in this census is if they were a suffragist. Many women who were campaigning for votes for women boycotted the 1911 census as part of their campaign. Some sleeping rough for the night or just simply refusing to be included. Just something to be aware of when searching this census. Do let me know if you have any other ideas about finding missing people in the census records or if you have any questions. And please do subscribe for more advice on ancestry research. Bye for now.